This is the second time I'm recording this video. To explain why, I'm just going to play the first couple seconds of the first draft. This is a video that I've been putting off making for really years because I've been hoping that GameMaker would eventually get around to adding a function to the, to the runtime to do this automatically. But they keep not doing it, and because I've made, at this point, several videos that have been pretty much instantly obsoleted by a Game Maker update, I'm hoping that by making this video I'm able to tempt fate and make that actually happen. Literally minutes after I finished recording that video, I checked the uh, feature request to see what the status of that was, and uh, as it turned out, that exact morning, it had been marked as complete and slated for release in the next beta. So... Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, let's talk about inverting matrices. This is a new addition in the 2024.11 Game Maker betas, so the November of 2024 Game Maker betas. If you're watching this video after that version of Game Maker has come out, congratulations! Matrix Inverse is a function that's built into the runtime and you don't have to think about it. If you are watching that video before that monthly version comes out, then you can either use the version of the beta that contains it, or later on in the video I will talk about a, a game maker function which you can, you can add to your project which will compute it for you. So when you want to transform a 3D model in space, you will use what is known as the matrix transform. I'm not going to get too into how these work right now. These are fairly elementary when it comes to doing 3D stuff in game maker or also just anywhere else. So in this example here, I am drawing a treasure chest model at the world origin, and it's going to be rotating around the vertical axis at a certain speed, and also scaled up because the original model is pretty small. So if I were to run this, uh, we would see that it's going to look something like this. Okay. So that's a treasure chest on the world origin, rotating around the vertical axis. And if you wanted to combine uh, multiple matrix transforms, you could, for example, let's say uh, var mat rotation equals that original uh, transform. We could save our mat translation equals and we can matrix build another uh, transform in space and this is going to contain a translation. So let's say 200, 300 and like 50 um, for our, um, our translation in the matrix build function. We won't put any rotation on this. Uh, we'll give it a uniform scale of one. And if you wanted to combine these, you could use save our mat combined equals matrix multiply and we can multiply together our two matrices we can multiply our trans our, our rotation matrix and we can multiply the translation component of that into that and that is going to give us a, a matrix which contains the combined transformation of the rotation plus translate plus translation and we can set that as our world matrix and that is going to give us a treasure chest that's some distance away from the world origin rotating in space. That's also hovering above the ground, as we can see. All right. Those are matrix transforms. If you've done a lot with 3D and Game Maker, you should be, you should be pretty good at using these already. Uh, do note that uh, matrix multiplication is non-commutative, so if you start with mat transform and multiply mat rotation into that, you're not going to get the same answer. And in fact, if I were to run this, I have no idea where the treasure chest has ended up because it's going to be uh, transforming the... Um, Transforming the thing in space, uh, scaling it up by 32 times, and then rotating it off by some crazy amount. Um, because uh, these transforms are always done with respect to the world origin, which is why you should always do rotation and scaling before translation. So where matrix inverse comes into this is what happens if you want to undo the product of these two transformations. So let's pretend we're going to just deal with normal numbers for a minute. So if you have two normal numbers, we can say a multiplied by b equals c. Uh, no matrices here yet, this is just normal non-threatening arithmetic. So what you would do if you started out with c, and let's say that you wanted to like get a to, to fall out, is you could take c and you could divide it by b and that would give you that would give you the a that you started with, right? When it comes to matrices, you multiply two matrices together, A and B, you get C. You can't really divide by a matrix. That's not really a thing that you can do that makes sense. So what you can instead do, and uh, if we again talk about normal numbers for a moment, uh, if you instead of dividing C by B, you can also consider multiplying C by uh, one, 1 over B. So multiplying C by the inverse of B or multiplying C by the reciprocal of B, and that's also going to give you A. And um, anyone who spent like more than about five minutes in a math class in their life probably is gonna is gonna think like, okay, that's kind of a trivial difference in it. And uh, for normal numbers, yes, but 
since again you can't really divide by matrix in a way that makes any sense um you are allowed to do an operation on matrices which is take the inverse of it and the inverse of a matrix effectively functions as the reciprocal of that matrix when it comes to multiplying by another matrix and undoing the uh, results of some transformation and that's what we're going to do today so uh let's hop over back to game maker and if you were to um Let's say that we started with with this over here, mat underscore combined. And let's say that we wanted to uh, do something with this, uh, this combined transformation matrix and end up with our original mat underscore rotation. So what we can do is we can take the inverse of the transformation that we want to get rid of, which is going to be, in this case, the translation. Uh, we can say mat translation inverse. And we can say matrix inverse. It feels so good to be able to type that in regular Game Maker. Uh, we can we can use the matrix inverse function on the original trans on the original translation, and then uh, we can multiply together. Uh, we can multiply together uh, matrix underscore combined by our matrix translation inverse, and that is going to give us. Uh, yeah, that is going to give us another matrix. I'm going to call this mat rotation the long way. And this is going to be identical to our original rotation matrix. You can compare the values inside this matrix to, um, to the original with like matrix, I mean, uh, array equals hey. uh, something like that. Uh, you can, uh, we can also just set this as our, uh, as our world matrix before we draw this treasure chest. And then, uh, even though we um, we took a bit of a roundabout way of calculating this from our, our original um, transformation matrix, uh, we can run the game now, and we can look down at the ground. And uh, even though we uh, our combined matrix originally had it out all the way over there, uh, we are going to be now looking at our, uh, our treasure chest being drawn at the world origin with nothing but a bit of scale and rotation. And now uh, we have used the inverse of the translation matrix to uh, to basically undo that part of the transformation. Now, uh, if you are using a slightly older version of Game Maker than came out about like an hour ago, let's say that you're using like an LTS version or like the most recent monthly version that doesn't have access to this function yet. Um, there are a handful of different uh, versions of Matrix Inverse which are floating around the internet which have been written by different people over the years. Um, I'm just going to go over to my other screen and I'm going to copy and paste out. Uh, let's create ourselves a script. Matrix. Matrix Inverse manually. And this is the, um, this is a Matrix Inverse function which I've basically been carrying over from various uh, projects over the years. I believe it originated in Scribble. Yeah. Uh, this uh, this matrix inverse function originated in Scribble. I'm going to give this a name that isn't like the name of a function that's already in use in Game Maker currently. And uh, this is uh, this is how it works inside. I am not super excited to talk about exactly how you would invert a matrix. Maybe someday if I really want to make more math videos. But as you can probably tell by looking at this, it's um it's going to be a bit to talk through. Uh, in fairness, the the technical process of inverting a matrix doesn't just involve multiplying together a bunch of like arbitrary indices. Um, you have to do a whole thing involving computing like the determinant of a matrix. And uh, usually you would do this by like looping over the indices in, in the matrix instead of hard coding a bunch of indices. But since matrices in Game Maker and, and in most places in Game Dev are pretty much always going to be four by four, uh, you will sometimes slash off and see it like unrolled like this for optimization purposes. But uh, fortunately, that doesn't matter very much in the future because uh, we now have a matrix inverse function built into Game Maker. Um, again, if you're using like an LTS version of Game Maker or an older monthly version which doesn't have access to this uh, before 2024.11, you can use this version of the function, and it will work. It'll just be a little bit on the uh, on the slow side, as I'm sure you can as I'm sure you can tell. All right, so a couple more things about this. Uh, you might have actually gotten a hint. Uh, as to the fact that this uh, this code minimap on on the side is not correct, but you might have actually gotten a hint uh, to this fact if you looked at this particular section uh, with a determinant in the matrix inverse manual function. But uh, not all matrices can actually be inverted. If the determinant of a matrix is zero, so if the product of these these indices multiplied together is zero, 
then the matrix is non-invertible. This particular matrix inverse function, if it finds a non-invertible matrix, will just return the original matrix. How useful that is, is a matter of debate. Uh, the version of the matrix inverse function, which is built into GameMaker, if the matrix that you give it is non-invertible, uh, it will just return undefined. So you may wish to check if the result of this function equals undefined before doing anything with it. For what it's worth, pretty much every matrix that you will run into in game dev, so a translation matrix, a rotation matrix, a scale matrix, a, a view or projection matrix, uh, you will be able to invert those. And if you're just using those, and if your your matrices are like not malformed or anything, you generally won't have to worry about the matrix being non-invertible. This also, and I might have not just I might have just not done a really great way of selling this function to you. Uh, if this doesn't sound very useful to you, uh, inverting matrices isn't something that you have to do all that often in games. It does come up once in a while if you have some sort of transformation that you want to undo like this. Um, if you remember in 3D and Game Maker, the world to screen and the screen to world functions, which basically took points and passed them backwards or forwards along the, um, like along the 3D transformation pipeline. Uh, screen to world kind of did a condensed version of multiplying a point in screen space by a uh, an inverse camera view and projection matrices, except in, um, I don't think I have it in this project now, but uh, the way that that was implemented actually took a bunch of shortcuts because the way that view and projection matrices are formed, uh, they will contain a bunch of zeros, which conveniently can be factored out when you try to multiply by them and when you try to take the inverse. Uh, so you can um, you can do screen to world operations in a slightly more efficient way than uh, having to invert the uh, world view and projection matrices and uh, and doing the whole operation the long way. If you watch my 3D collisions in Game Maker series, you might recall a couple of occasions where we uh, I think especially when it came to doing 3D collisions with rotated bounding boxes. In some cases, you can make the uh, collision check slightly easier with those by multiplying. The, uh, the transforms of both shapes by the inverse of the orientation of uh, the oriented bounding box so that we could reset its rotation to like the world coordinate system, which, which made 3D collision checks against it slightly easier. It's not something that you'll use every day, and it certainly is something that you could make 3D games in Game Maker and indeed pretty much anywhere else without really having to use very often. But when you do want to use it, it is nice to have it built into the runtime instead of having to compute it yourself like this. Uh, so one last thing before I go, let's talk about performance. So um, I am going to uh, let's let's repeat this a hundred times uh, so that we could get a uh, so that we could get a measure on performance. And I'm going to run this in the debugger, and we're going to look at how long it takes a um, hundred runs of the built-in matrix inverse function to run. Uh, looking at the profiler, so let's do this. Uh, yes, I would. I would like to grant the debugger access to uh, to the to the Windows firewall because you've got to do that every time you uh, you run the debugger in a new version of Game Maker. Uh, where's the profile? So let's start profiling here, and let's uh, let's sort this by the most expensive operation to the least. Um, the matrix inverse. Calling this a hundred times is going to take about let's call it to be a conservative on my computer about thirty microseconds. Okay, so that's um that's pretty speedy. Um, if we were to run this in using our matrix inverse manual, um, manually as the adverb, if we were to run this using our matrix inverse manually function, all right, let's put that in the view of the camera. Let's let's jump on over back to the debugger isn't running, is it? I definitely hit F5 instead of F6. But anyway, if we start profiling, uh, we can look at the performance cost of matrix inverse manually, and for 100 runs, it is taking two and a half milliseconds. So that's 2,000. Um, let's let's call it about 2,300 milliseconds. Hey. So this is literally almost 100 times slower uh, to do it manually than to use the built-in than to use the built-in matrix inverse function. So that is actually a lot a lot faster than I was expecting it to be. So a single matrix inverse manually function call uh, takes is going to take about 23 microseconds to run, which is almost as much as a whole 100 uh, matrix inverse uh, function calls built into the runtime. The cost of calling array create 100 times alone is already more expensive than that, um, than the built-in matrix invert function, which is actually a little weird when I think about it, because like, at minimum, 
when you invert a matrix, you have to do this at least anyway. Hey. But whatever. Uh, given the choice, you should use the built-in version of this function. I'm really glad that it exists. I tell people not to worry about how slow uh, GameMaker is as a as a virtual machine, but things like this really do uh, really do highlight that sometimes. And you could optimize certain individual bits of this, like. Um, there are certain indices multiplied together, like index 10 multiplied by index 15, which appear a couple of times, which you could like factor out. But I doubt that's going to really save that much time uh, compared to the built-in version. So I think that's going to do it for me for today. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of the video. I like to post videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, uh, weird 3D stuff, weird shader stuff, all that sort of thing. I also do like to post videos on new additions to Game Maker once in a while. Uh, this this happens to contain the intersection of those two subjects. So if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to that can be found down below as well. I hope you all found this useful. I hope you all greatly enjoy the fact that we can now invert a matrix in Game Maker. without having to do it ourself, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.